Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel for another Celestron Origin video. So glad to have you, my name is Vax. Today we are talking about the Origins calibration frames. We're gonna dive in and learn a little bit more about calibration frames and how we can capture new ones to get the most out of our astro images. Stay tuned, let's get right on in. Calibration frames are super important when it comes to successful astro imaging. They typically consist of three different types, dark frames, flat frames, and bias frames. With those calibration frames, we can get really high quality astro images. They are just as important for the origin to have calibration frames as it is for any of the other astro imaging rigs out there. Calibration frames allow us to deliver better noise reduction, better vignetting reduction, and also any dust that might be on the imaging sensors or focal reducers or anything. Those, of course, can be eliminated as well with calibration frames. Now, the origin is a little bit different because unlike most astro imaging rigs where you have several components that you're tearing apart and setting up every single time where you could get more dust or different angles introduced in different areas. The origin is quite a bit different than that because it's pretty much just an all-in-one optical tube. There's really not a lot that you can really change on the origin right now. So some of those things are a little bit less of a concern, but the calibration frames are still just as important. From the factory, the Origin does come with a set of calibration frames already preloaded onto the onboard software. We've got dark frames already in there for the standard settings on the app that we use. We have standard flat frames for the default orientation of the camera loaded in there as well. So everything is pretty much just ready to go out of the box. So first things first, let's talk about dark frames. The default origin dark frames are going to be good enough for most users out there. Dark frames do not need to be recaptured if you change the orientation of the camera or you add a different filter in there or anything like that. Basically, dark frames just read the noise pattern of the image so that you can subtract that noise from your images that you capture of whatever celestial target that you're doing for the night. But if you do want to recapture new dark frames for your imaging session, let's say you're trying a different exposure length that is not preloaded into the Origins onboard memory, or later down the line when we get support for equatorial function and we get longer exposures that may exceed 30 seconds or one minute long, we do need to have new dark frames for those. All you're gonna do is set up your origin in your dark garage or dark living room. You'll wanna make sure that it has a very dark surrounding to it. You'll wanna put the end cap on the front. You'll go into your origin app on your mobile device Go into advanced and you should see all of the settings, but we're going to focus down here towards the bottom where it says recapture dark frames. Now we have a couple different options here. We have the dark frame ISO and we have dark frame exposure. Typically the default ISO for the clear filter or a UV IR filter is going to be the standard 200 ISO. This is good enough for bright enough images on galaxies and star clusters and if you're using a narrow band filter, that is when you'll want to bump it up to that 2000 ISO. Now the dark frame exposure needs to match whatever exposure you're using for the night. So if you're using, you know, 15 second exposures, then you need to take 15 second dark frames. If we're later down the road here and we have this thing on a wedge and we're taking 45 second exposures, then we need to take a 45 second long dark frame as well. You'll just need to match those with whatever you're doing for that night. Once you have those settings ready and you have your end cap on and it's in a dark room, you can hit recapture dark frames and it'll go through and take those new dark frames for you and you're all set to go for your imaging run. Now you can do this when you're out under the night sky. Obviously it is dark enough out there so you can just put on the end cap, recapture your dark frames before you do your initialization for the night on the origin if you want to go that route as well. One of the things I found really interesting when I was researching Celestron's dark frame calculation for the origin was they pretty much give a two minute timestamp as the limit for dark frame capture. So if you're taking 10 second dark frames, you're going to get 12 dark frames in two minutes. 
and that is where it will stop. It'll take those 12 and use those 12 as its library. If you're taking 30 seconds, you're only going to get four out of those. For every one of those dark frames captured, the origin will automatically capture a few bias frames, which means you don't have to do anything special for bias frame capture. It will automatically incorporate those when you do your dark frame captures. Now, flat frames are a little bit different. Flat frames measure your vignetting pattern and also if you have any dust on the sensor. If you're not changing out the filter too much, there really isn't anything that's going to happen here in terms of dust. But if you are changing out the filter to your own narrow band imaging filter, or you're swapping back and forth between filters, sometimes the filters can have a few little particles of dust on them. And that is where sometimes you'll see little dust bunnies in your images that look like little donuts. And those are basically the dust particles showing up in your images. Flat frames can correct those, and flat frames are also vital if you're going to rotate the Celestron Origins camera orientation. If you want to rotate the camera to get a better framing of, let's say, the Orion Nebula or something, you will have to capture a new flat frame for that. Now, flat frames are a little bit trickier to capture. You'll need an LED panel or something like an iPad, something that's larger than the front objective of your Origin. And this is for proper illumination on the full camera chip. Once you've captured these new calibration frames, the Origin will automatically use these to process your images live on your screen. When you're done imaging for the night and you download your raw files from the Origin's onboard memory onto your USB stick, you will get the stacked master files of your calibration frames that it used for your image run. So you'll be able to use these in Pixinsight, Serial, Deep Sky Stacker, whatever it is that you use to stack your images manually, you'll be able to use the master files on those programs to get the most out of your images. I hope you found this video extremely helpful for you if you need to capture new dark frames or flat frames on your Celestron Origin to get the most out of your astro images. Clear skies to you, and I'll see you next time.